Hello, welcome to the All Ohio Red Alumni Update. I'm excited to be able to bring this project to you. Uh, since coming to All Ohio Red, the first thing that I talked to Jerry Watson about was really honoring our alumni, um, identifying the guys that, that built this program for us, um, and being able to, to give them their due. Um, at the same token, educating our current and future players on you know, that history, because you know, that's something that's vital in, in really building a program as your alumni, and their, you know, their ability to continue to grow and develop, their ability to come back and involve themselves in the program currently. Uh, so excited to talk about our alumni here on a weekly basis. Um, Currently at the college basketball level, there's 47 guys playing um, at, the, at, at the college level that were alumni of All Ohio Red. So that's an impressive number. Uh, you know, anytime you've got guys that are matriculating from AAU to college uh, and, and doing well, uh, that's something to, to be proud of, to be excited about. Um, there's three current NBA players. Uh, you know, there's quite a few you know, former NBA players that, that were, are All Ohio Red alumni. Two NBA assistant coaches, um, seven college coaches currently um, and one NBA executive. So, you know, there's, there's no shortage of alumni that are succeeding uh, after their time with All Ohio Red. And you know, each week we're going to point out a few of those, those key guys, a few of those guys that are having bigger weeks than others. Um, and we'll continue to, to, to spotlight guys as we go through this process of all levels. Uh, we're looking at not only Division I guys, not only NBA guys, but, but all of our guys at all levels. So I'm excited to bring you this project. Um, this week we're going to talk about two college guys, talk about two NBA guys, um, then we'll talk about one college and one pro guy. So we'll, we'll stick to two college players, two pro players, um, and, and then two coaches or executives. That's what we're going to do for today. Um, and we'll start with Ryan Mike Sell. Uh, so, you know, as I've watched Dayton you know, over the last couple of years, uh, I've been extremely impressed with many things from them. But one of the things that stands out the most to me is their leadership. Uh, that's one of the things that, you know, you, your locker room has to, you have to have leaders. Without leaders, without guys that um, are, are willing to sacrifice for the team and do whatever their role calls on, uh, regardless of their personal stats or personal, you know, awards, uh, those are guys that, that take your team from being good to being great. Those are the type of guys you have to have on a championship type roster. Um, and, and Dayton has some of those guys. Uh, Ryan Mike Sell, you know, the, the senior forward, he had an amazing week. Um, he's actually had a pretty solid season. He's just under 11 points per game for Dayton. Uh, this week, though, he, again, in the game against UMass, 15 points, 14 rebounds. Uh, he played amazing uh, and really showed us that he's going to be the key uh, or one of the keys to the run here that Dayton's having. Um, he's, it's going to be important for him to continue this type of play and this type of production in order for them to make a run into March. And that's what I'm looking for and expecting from this Dayton team. The other player that stood out to me as I watched basketball this week, uh, Jalen Coleman Lance at DePaul. Uh, the senior guard has had a great season. Uh, he's just over 11 points per game. Uh, in their last two games, he's, at, he's had 15 in each. Uh, DePaul's hit a little bit of a rough patch. They've had a couple losses here, uh, but I, I'm expecting to see them turn it around as they get into Big East play. Um, I think that the team's very talented. Uh, they've got a lot of great players. Jalen's one of them. I'm excited to see him continue to grow and develop. I'm excited to see how he finishes out the season after starting it pretty strong. But 15 in these last two games this week earned him uh, a spot in, in this alumni update. Um, on the coaching side, let's jump over to college. Before we go pro, we'll jump over to college coaching. Jewel Selinger. Um, Jewel Selinger at his alma mater, Kent State. He's done a phenomenal job. Right now, they're number one in the MAC East. They're 13 and three. Um, I'm impressed with, with what Jules has done, not only on the court, but on the recruiting side. Um, he, he's recruited hard. I've, I've heard a lot of people talking about Kent State, uh, players of mine that he's recruited that, you know, prior to talking to him, have said, ah, you know, I really don't, I don't know if the max for me, I want to go a little bit higher. Um, they walk out of that conversation saying, hey, I could play, I could play for Jules. I, I could go to Kent State. Uh, so Julian Selinger is doing an amazing job. I'm excited to see, you know, what he's done there at his alma mater. I'm excited to see him continue to grow and develop as a coach. Um, you know, and, and then you know, I've continued to watch what's going to happen there from a recruiting standpoint. I think that you know, they have an opportunity to win the MAC this year and, and be one of those powerhouses in the MAC for years to come if he continues to recruit the way that he's recruiting. So um, that's my college side. You know, those are my, my spotlights on the college side. Now on the pro side, Terry Rozier. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm impressed by his game. Um, 
Terry popped on the scene, you know, at Boston. Um, and guys, a lot of guys didn't really know who he was. Uh, and, and the funny thing is, that's kind of how his career was all the way through high school and college. You know, when you talk about, you know, EYBL, when you talk about, you know, in, in the state of Ohio, um, Terry wasn't one of those names that was, was always spoken about, but anybody that saw him play live walked away from that game saying, man, Terry's one of the best players in the state, if not one of the best in the country. Um, and now he's doing it at the NBA level. You know, he's right there at 19 points a game. Um, he's averaging over four assists and four rebounds a game. So he's having a huge season since going to the Hornets. I'm excited to see what they're able to do, see if they're able to make the Eastern Conference playoffs. Um, I think that they've got a solid roster. I think that, you know, Terry has, has shown, um, he showed it in, 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 uh, with the Celtics. He showed his ability to score and, and make things happen uh, with the ball in his hands. He's doing the same thing in Charlotte, but he's also rebounding exceptionally well. Um, he's creating for others. So those are some things that stand out to me. Uh, and then our other player at the pro level that, stand, that stood out this past week, Karis LeVert. You know, Karras is averaging you know, over 16 points a game, um, three assists, a little bit over four rebounds a game. So, you know, two guys that are doing exceptionally well. Karras is there in Brooklyn. Um, obviously, with Kyrie coming back and, you know, they'll get KD next year. They, Spencer Dinwiddie. I mean, they've got an amazing roster to work with. One of my favorites for not only this year, but for years to come in the East. Um, so two guys from all Ohio Red that are in great situations to continue to, to thrive at the NBA level. Um, now, here's one that you're not going to see every night. You're not going to see, you know, in the stat lines. You're not going to see in the news. But one that I think absolutely deserves a whole lot of acknowledgement and, and a whole lot of, of recognition. And that's Calvin Booth. Um, amazing, amazing resume as a player. Uh, he, did, he had an, a great career. Uh, but I'm being a guy that works on the backside and in the shadows of sports. Um, I always look at executives and, and, and impressed and, and inspired by what they're doing. So, you know, with him being an assistant GM with the Nuggets, uh, his imprint is all over that team. He's been a winner at every level, and now he has the Nuggets number one in the West. So uh, 27 and 12, they had a big win last night against the Clippers. Calvin Booth, you're doing an amazing job. Keep it up. I see you. We see you. All of Ohio Red sees you. Um, and, and guys all over the country are seeing your growth and development. Uh, hopefully within the next couple of years, he'll be a GM somewhere and he'll continue that process of growth and development. And we'll have other, you know, other guys to continue to talk about over these next couple of weeks. Um, you know, once again, I think that, you know, I want to give our alumni a place to, uh, to be honored and celebrated. Without you, there would be no All Ohio Red. Uh, let's, let's continue to talk about you. Let's continue to, you know, do well on that next level so we can talk about you. Um, and, and this summer, let's put some things together. Let's get you guys coming back, connecting with our guys, um, showing them uh, the, the steps um, and the processes and the methods that it takes to be successful at that next level and what's taking you to that level of success. So, um, guys, thanks for, for tuning in. Uh, continue to do well out there, all Ohio alum. We're looking at you. I'm looking at you. And hopefully, you know, somebody new will earn a spot in our spotlight here for next week. Thanks. Bye.